As meteorologists, we bring you forecasts every day. And one of the tools in the toolkit are NOAA GOES satellites. They help us deliver the most accurate predictions. Earlier this evening, NOAA and NASA jointly launched a brand new state of the art weather observing satellite. It's called GOES T, and it's the third of its kind. Not only is it going to help us prepare for weather on Earth, it also tracks space weather too. And we have one of the most esteemed experts here telling us more about it. We have senior hurricane specialist straight from the National Hurricane Center in Miami, Dr. Jack Bevan. Dr. Bevan, thanks so much for joining us. Can you tell us why this ghost team mission is going to help our viewers get more accurate in life saving weather data? Well, the GOES T satellite is the third in the advanced uh, generation, advanced technology generation of geostationary weather satellites that we've been launching since 2016. It's going to be stationed out over the Pacific Ocean, uh, which means you'll be able to watch an area from Alaska down to Antarctica and from South America over to Australia. And it'll be watching the movement and the intensity of weather systems in that area. And a lot of those weather systems that move across the Pacific do affect the United States. A lot of the wintertime storms start out as uh, impulses in the jet stream of the Pacific. And actually these weather systems in the Pacific also can play a role of whether Atlantic hurricanes will hit the United States or not. So it's important to monitor that area as well as directly see the Eastern United States and the Atlantic Ocean as well. And actually there's a global network of these satellites that enables us to track these systems. So GOES-T will be continuing and enhancing our capabilities to monitor the uh, weather systems in that area that can have downstream impacts of the United States. Dr. Bevin, in recent years, we've seen quite a few natural disasters from tornado outbreaks, volcanic eruptions, strong hurricanes making landfall in the United States, and of course the wildfires in the western United States. We have some of those images that we can see here. Can you tell us how Ghost T is going to help us when those types of events occur? Well, Ghost T will be taking pictures of the full globe that it can see every 10 minutes. So it'll give us highly detailed information and a whole bunch of different wavelengths or frequencies of light that will help us monitor all kinds of phenomena, including hurricanes, tornadic thunderstorms, uh, impulses in the jet stream that influence large scale weather, volcanic eruptions, wildfires, and the like. And uh, over focus areas, it'll be taking pictures every five minutes. And then over special focus areas where really severe weather or other events are, are occurring, it'll be taking pictures every one minute to every 30 seconds. So be giving us tremendous detailed information for where these natural hazards are occurring. The Ghost Fleet, it's commonly known as a workhorse. It has a lot of capabilities that actually may surprise some folks. Can you tell us about some of those unique bells and whistles that Ghost T is gonna be able to do? Well, Ghost T has a variety of instruments on it. It has an imager, which is a, uh, a super powered gener uh, version of the camera in your phone that can take highly detailed pictures from its position 22,000 miles up in space. It has an instrument that can track and map lightning discharges in thunderstorm clouds all over the world. Now, that's very important. The instruments in the imager can not just detect normal weather, but they can detect and track volcanic ash plumes, amongst other things. Mm -hmm and other important features and detect the heat signatures of wildfires and volcanic eruptions. Uh, one surprise benefit was that when the uh, Tonga volcano erupted, we saw the atmospheric shockwave propagate mm -hmm. around the world through the use of the satellite imagery and help verify what we were seeing in all the surface instruments that detected it. So the, uh, it's not just the weather satellite it has a great variety of uses for all sorts of environmental hazards. How about other fields, other industries? Are there others that are also going to benefit from this new satellite uh, other than just us meteorologists? Uh, I would say most people will benefit from it in some way, shape or form. The satellite's not just used by meteorologists. Anybody who has an interest in hazardous weather or potentially other hazardous conditions, for example, wildfires, they're then the use of the data to emergency management community. Uh, we'll have a great use for this satellite. Uh, the satellite also has capability to detect uh, what we call space weather, energy emissions from the sun that can influence uh, things on the earth like the aurora or cause damage to our satellites or, or possibly aircraft flying up near the poles where the earth's magnetic field is as thinnest and closest to the earth. So lots of people will be benefiting from this satellite once it's in orbit. 
Dr. Bevan, you and I are both meteorologists and, and scientists and our jobs to predict the future. This is the third iteration of GOES satellites of four. What do you think the next one's going to have in it? Well, the, the next satellite, GOES U, will be very similar to the current one. It will be a, a continuation of the current capabilities. NOAA is already planning for the next generation of weather satellites to be launched in the 2030s. The capabilities are still being discussed and what kind of instruments they're going to be carrying uh, has, hasn't been finalized yet. I've been a part of a few of those discussions actually and uh, there's a lot of interesting ideas that are in the pipeline right now. Uh, some of them will be enhancements of what we've got now, even more high powered images, uh, imagers, faster image, faster imagery, more high resolution spatial imagery, uh, put more frequencies on the satellite so we can see more phenomena. And then there'll be some other stuff we haven't tried before, but exactly what's gonna be on it is still open to discussion amongst all of us who are working on this. So, Okay, so Dr. Bevan, uh, this is so exciting. A lot of folks that maybe they just like weather, maybe they like the science and technology aspect, and they're intrigued. They've heard what you've said and they wanna learn more. What's some resources or, or a direction that they could go to find more information about not only Ghost T, but the entire operation? Uh, if you uh, uh, Google or, or do a social media search for Ghost R or Ghost satellites or NOAA Ghost satellites, you'll find a lot of information, including much of the real-time imagery that is transmitted down from the satellite where you can watch all the phenomena happen in real time. So it's all out there and that's how you find it. It's called Ghost T now. Does that change when it's up in the air and in orbit and operation? It's, does its name or designation change? Yes, it, when the satellite successfully reaches orbit and is put into what's called operations, it passes all the it's, all the instruments pass their checkout. Everything is working. It will be renamed GOES 18, and it will uh, replace GOES 17 as the what we call the GOES West satellite, watching the uh, weather over the Pacific Ocean. Uh, Dr. Bevan, it's obviously a very busy day for you folks at NOAA, the Hurricane Center at NASA. We can't thank you enough for uh, finding some time to visit with us and our viewers here today about this exciting uh, new initiative and this new project that's really going to change the game of weather forecasting. Senior Hurricane Specialist straight from the National Hurricane Center, Dr. Jack Bevan. Dr. Bevan, thank you again for joining us this morning. My pleasure. Thanks for having me.